Welcome to uh, the end of the day. Uh, we are the last session's time slot between you and dinner and happy hour, so we'll try to be quick. Um, today, we're going to be talking about building scalable generative AI apps with vector search and RAG. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a like 100 level session. We'll get into kind of what these things are. We're also going to get into some deeper technical things. We're also going to have some great customers today. Uh, who are going to be showing you real things that they actually built. So today we have myself, uh, Iran, uh, my coworker, and we also have Clarence, Aaron Dam here, who are going to be able to speak to some stuff that they built. So in short, going to go through intro, customer, what is Gen Apps, Agent Builder, Vector Search, Customer Voice, and Q&A. And so again, starting the introduction, um, if you haven't seen this market architecture has been pasted around on a lot of the cloud AI and vector cert, vertex AI uh, architecture, we're talking about the agent builder portion here. Um, this portion is effectively all the tool sets and the pieces for people to be able to come and build agents. Today, we're also talking about search, and one of the things that we really like to highlight here is that the possibility search has really expanded in the last year and a half, two years. Uh, semantic search has become accessible with embeddings, Generative search with conversations and answers are now widely available, and customers expect AI-powered systems that can orchestrate complex reasonings across a lot of different data sources. So what does that mean? It means today that we're actually seeing that both search, in a more classic sense, relative to what time you're looking at, and Gen AI are better together. We're seeing a uh, part of the market where search is being enhanced by Gen AI because it's able to quickly improve search and summarization, complex query handling, and enterprise developers are up-leveling their expectations of their internal applications that they're making because of this. We're also noticing that Gen AI is enhanced by search, and in this case, we're talking about retrieval augmented generation, or RAG in short, which is becoming critical in delivering enterprise apps that are factual, fresh, and effective. So with that, we're actually going to start with a customer example right off the bat of something that they've been building, uh, and I'm going to go to Clarence. Thanks, Josh. Uh, for those that are not familiar with Dow Jones, we are a global news and information provider. Um, sorry. Uh, we pride ourselves on our award-winning journalism and delivering trusted news, information, and data to customers and organizations around the world. Uh, we do this through our B2B products, Factiva, Newswires, Risk and Compliance, Opus, and CMA, and to customer subscribers through the Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, Barron's, and Investors Business Daily. In the session, I'm going to talk about Factiva and our partnership with Google. Uh, Factiva is our leading business intelligence and research product. Uh, it's been in market for over 20 years. We partner with over 33,000 trusted sources around the world uh, in over 30 languages. We have an archive of two and a half billion documents uh, dating back to the 1940s, and we process between half a million and a million new pieces of information every single day. Tiva currently uses a powerful, sorry, a powerful lexical and Boolean search engine. Uh, you can think of this as keyword search on steroids. Uh, this lets our information pros and research pros go very deep around a specific topic filtering by company, industry, uh, region, dates. There are over a dozen uh, different filtering criteria. But we wanted to broaden our capabilities and introduce semantic search to the product. Um, semantic search lets our customers use natural language uh, to search our archive and return highly relevant contextual results. Given our scale, 2 billion documents, processing up to a million documents a day, uh, and our performance KPIs of delivering information within 60 seconds to customers, uh, we knew uh, Google and the Vertex team were the right solution for us. This is a slightly simplified version of our architecture. Uh, we use a number of core Google products, uh, BigQuery for our content archive. We're using the Gecko model for embeddings, and we're storing those in vector search for performance. We have done extensive testing against this architecture and have seen, quite frankly, really remarkable results. Uh, across a broad range of queries, our testers are seeing uh, often 2 to 3x uh, greater relevancy scores compared to our lexical search, uh, and that's very exciting for us. Uh, in addition, we're experimenting with summarization grounded with RAG, uh, leveraging Gemini Pro. We can do multiple prompts and really dig into a customer's search and provide deeper insights. I'll close with some screenshots of our internal tests. Uh, we're really excited to get semantic search in the hands of our Factiva customers. 
Uh, we think it'll be a great addition to an already powerful search product. Um, and I'll turn it back to Josh. Thank you for your time and thank you for your partnership. Thanks, Clarence. Uh, so this next section, Gen A applications. Uh, so taking a step back from what the customer is just sharing for a second. We're seeing a whole range of Gen AI business use cases. We kind of bucketed here for simplicity. The blue is essentially thematic pieces. You can see things like Gen AI for marketing, website modernization, customer service, and then internally knowledge worker operations and such. What's really interesting though is when you make swim lanes or sub concepts on these, we're also seeing that many of these are actually improved by RAG, the stuff in green here. Um, and we'll show you why in a second. Some deeper examples here, uh, if you're not familiar, if you think about some of these use cases, customer service here, um, improves the customer agent experience and drive operational efficiencies. You can imagine like automating contact centers and other pieces that are coming in or on your website and chatbots and such. Uh, in these, we're finding that generative AI customer service functions can increase productivity by 30 to 45%. And generative AI can further reduce volumes of human service by contacts up to 50%. So you can imagine big improvements on employee productivity, servicing your customers, so on and so forth, right? Similar on the internal productivity, you get a very wide range of use cases that we're seeing that people are building against. Uh, marketing, sales, R&D, risk, legal finance, IT, you name it, everything has some level of information and pieces in it that are gonna be able to be improved on in enhancing the human experience and productivity in the agents. So what are we hearing from customers, though? Because there's all this great opportunity. They're saying, uh, how can we build easily production-ready RAG applications? These things need to be relevant and personalized to me. They need to be able to have control and customization. The AI bots within a few clicks with transactional capabilities, mitigating risk of hallucinations, and security and privacy. These are all really common across pretty much all of these use cases that we just showed. And so what we're really finding is that building generative AI applications is really complex. There is a lot of work still yet to be done around quality. Sometimes these uh, solutions that are being offered look like black box problems. Evaluating is very difficult. And they find that prototype into production has an entire new pipeline. You're probably hearing about ML ops and, and other things like that. And it's being enhanced and fortified with the generative AI needs, running multiple agents, multiple models, multiple flows, multiple sources of data, so on and so forth. So with that complexity, what we are offering now is uh, Agent Builder. And in Agent Builder, this is effectively our toolkit and toolbox to help you be able to build agents better, faster, have all those kind of controls and pieces that we mentioned before. This is a platform in nature. It enables you to be able to build all the different types of applications, high in the stack, low in the stack, as wide as you like. We're gonna be offering tooling around orchestration, grounding and augmenting, being able to take actions and even primitives, which is a lot of what we're gonna talk about for RAG specifically here. Um, we have pre-built no-code options you may have seen in the keynote, and we have a lot of low-code all the way through full code, and it's gonna be fully integrated with what you see in Vertex AI if you're used to coming in and building, tuning, and training models as well. The whole point of doing this is because we're trying to simplify and streamline the tools for your developer journey, prototyping, application architecture design, your quality evaluations and iterations, and then your productivity and production apps running with your ML uh, ops and your evaluations of that. I'll pause because I know people are taking pictures. I don't have a lot to say on this one. So getting into the RAG again, what we also found is that most Gen AI use cases do benefit from RAG. We mentioned that before. Um, what we're finding here is if you break down generative AI use cases, typically generating content, retrieving information, summarizing, all of this immediately benefits from having RAG, and these are some of the top use cases that we use. There's some examples here. I'm not gonna read through it because people are gonna get the pictures or can pause this on the recording and such. But effectively, there's a lot of different use cases, again, that people are finding where they need these things. So. For anyone who is not familiar, what is grounding or RAG? Effectively, without retrieval augmented generation, your LL model is the only source of knowledge, which is where hallucination comes from. It depends on what it was trained on, it depends on the tuning, it depends on the prompt and the context that it has available to it. So what we do is with RAG or grounding, we are augmenting the retrieval of the knowledge for the LLM to have sources and citations to be able to help focus it and saying, please return to me an appropriate answer or an appropriate response of the information we're trying to retrieve. Right? And the reason why this is really cool is because it's just kind of like a person. You gotta go look up some information on the internet and find your citations and say, okay, now I know why it's X or Y or so forth. So the benefits of this is that you get factuality and grounding is uh, improved uh, immensely uh, through a RAG process. You're getting better context, you're getting fresher data, 
your quicker updates to the data um, because you can be updating not the model itself and you don't have to retune everything. You can actually just update your sources uh, in the RAG element. Um, it can be cheaper uh, than going and retraining entire models um, and your governance around the control of the LLM becomes also more controllable. So if you look at a RAG pipeline, it generally breaks down sort of like this. Uh, in it, you have your collections in the beginning, your building is essentially processing your data, creating embeddings, indexing and retrieving, ranking and you're generating, and then you can so run and serve, which is validating the information you got in serving. Today, we already offer Vertex out of the box search, which actually does all of this, as you see in blue here, out of the box for you, very simple to use, managed service. This was announced last next, it's in GA. If people aren't aware of it, go play with it. It's fun, it's cool, it works pretty well. We've been continuing to improve it over the last year uh, to take on more use cases, uh, more quality, as well as being able to extend into some more specific vertical spaces like healthcare and such as well. But what we're offering today, and this is why everyone's here, is for RAG uh, and everything we're doing at RAG. Uh, we have a bunch of new primitives and components in this that's gonna allow people to build modify, control, and have a deep uh, uh, element of, well, control uh, to all the pieces that you're trying to do in your RAG pipeline. Um, in this, we're not gonna cover all of these. Uh, there are some other sessions, one that just concluded that actually gets more into this, so please do check online. Uh, but we have document processing and understanding uh, that's new. Our ranking API is also new. Our grounding generating API is new, and our check grounding is also new. We also have major updates today for vector search and vertex text embeddings, um, two of the core components to building any RAG system. And so in that, I'm going to hand it over to Ron to speak more about vector search. Thanks, Josh. Talk a little bit about vector search. Let's dive into vector search a little bit. Um, so if you're building your own RAG application that requires fetching your most relevant documents, that's the R in RAG. Um, but that means calculating distance between vectors. You have the prompt, you have the documents, you need to find the most relevant documents. So if they are closer together, it means that they are more relevant. If they are farther, if they're larger distance, they're less relevant. So it's pretty straightforward, but if you try to do this at scale, um, it could get uh, very computationally challenging. So for example, if you have 10 million embeddings at 768 dimensions, that's over 7 billion computations. Um, so that wouldn't make for a great user experience if you try to do this within an online application. So how do we solve for this? So researchers have been studying a technique called approximate nearest neighbor, or ANN. Um, ANN uses vector quantization um, to separate the embeddings into multiple clusters within a tree structure, um, and that enables fast and scalable search. A few years ago, Google published a paper called SCAN, um, which was a new algorithm for ANN. It's considered one of the best ANN algorithms um, in the industry, and it powers massive scale Google applications such as Search, Play, and YouTube. Today, Google Cloud developers and all of you here could take full advantage of this uh, algorithm scan with Vertex AI Vector Search. So why use Vertex AI Vector Search? So first of all, it's blazingly fast and massively scalable. Um, you could uh, build online applications. You need them to retrieve uh, your documents within milliseconds so that it creates a, a great user experience. And you need it to scale with your application. As your use, usage grows, you want it to be able to handle the load. Second, it's cost effective. So scan is incredibly efficient as an algorithm. Um, as you scale, you still want to continue providing low latency, high recall, Scan gets that for you and makes it more cost effective with less resources at scale. Third, it's enterprise ready. So it has private cloud security controls and access controls for, uh, for your applications. And now it's easier to get started with our new console that makes it easy to create an index, um, build an index, and start uh, building your application. So what can you do with it? So Josh talked about RAG. It's not just RAG. Um, there, is, uh, there are search applications, as we saw with uh, Clarence's example of semantic search. Um, we could build recommendation systems, trust and safety with item deduplication or spam detection, and then generative AI. So RAG, uh, online RAG applications, agents that are fast and scalable, you could use uh, Vertex AI vector search for. Um, so if you're thinking, you know, I want to build some of these um, and I want to use a vector search application, there are some core capabilities that you're going to need. 
Um, Vertex AI Vector Search is uh, a full-featured managed service, which means uh, it has all these features for you to use without having to handle your own infrastructure. It uh, has uh, updates to keep your index fresh with the latest documents. Auto-scaling makes it possible for you to scale up and down based on your needs without having to manage your own infrastructure. We have LangChain integration with the most popular framework for RAG um, to make it easy to connect vector search with other uh, RAG components. And then filtering and diversifying your search results at query time, you keep the same high performance um, and you get uh, the filtering capability built into vector search. And in the coming weeks, we will be launching hybrid search to public preview. So dense embeddings or large language models are great for semantic understanding, as we saw in Clarence's example. You, you can ask it natural language questions. It does an amazing job of retrieving the most relevant documents. Keyword search, on the other hand, or kind of traditional search uh, uh, systems, they are not great with semantic context, but they're great for just matching on specific keywords. What you want is something that combines both of them um, in order to get the best relevance uh, at scale. With this new feature that we will be launching, you will have the better search relevance with the same high performance that Vertex CI Vector Search provides. We'll be releasing a hybrid search to public preview in the next few weeks. Another important RAG enabler, besides vector search, is embeddings. So you want to embed your data and then index it in vector search. We are making significant improvements to our vertex text embeddings algorithm. Uh, API. We will have uh, we have now recent performance improvements that will make it even more relevant search results. We have dynamic dimensions. You could scale. You could choose the dimensionality to kind of balance cost and accuracy, and embeddings tuning. So you can bring in your own examples, tune embeddings to be uh, more relevant to your data. Vertex AI embeddings and vector search together make it easy to build high-performance, high-quality RAG uh, applications. So what's next? Uh, we have a lot of features we're, we're launching, but we're not done. So you're going to continue hearing from us about optimizations that we'll be doing for both high and low-performance use cases. We'll be making ve Vertex AI vector search even simpler to use, so I could get your applications up and running even faster. And you'll hear more about broad system integrations with uh, Vertex AI Vector Search and other Vertex AI uh, and GCP components. And now we'll hear from Arendam from Uber to talk about the application that they are building with Vector Search. Vector Search has a great collaboration with Uber. We're happy to see what we are building with it. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we are doing in the customer service space. The particular team that we are representing is uh, customer obsession. Uh, and the goal here is to provide efficient, differentiated, and high quality customer care for everybody, including Uber Eats and Uber. What we want to set out to do is build an MVP of an AI assistant that is conversational and answers earners' questions. So these are drivers and delivery partners who are asking us questions. We have thousands of help center articles that are already present. These are high quality articles, but we want to present this to the earners in a conversational and robust way. So if somebody comes in and asks a question about earnings, we want to give them an answer that collaborates all of this. So this is what we want to build out to. Let me give you a little bit more context. So the opportunity is a lot of the Uber contacts we have are informational in nature and many of you have the same use case also. So we have lots of good articles, but once again, we want to present them in a clean, conversational way so that they can, the owners can get the best experience that they have. A good example is this question on the right, how do I check my earnings? So even if you have a bunch of articles that are good for this, you have to go through each one of them individually to find the right piece of information. Let me just start with the demo first. So here's, uh, you can go and ask your question, and it opens up. We give some hints that, hey, this is an AI. You're experiencing, you're talking to an AI, so on and so forth. And then we let it open for a conversation. So the first question that's going to be asked is, once again, the same question that we were talking about is checking about users' earnings. So as we saw before in the world before Gen AI, 
you'd have a bunch of these articles, but now we can collaborate and put all of these together into one good conversational answer, and then we provide some uh, links to it. This is, this is a running conversation. It's multi-turn. So now they ask a separate question about something totally different about tolls. And once again, you will see that it will think through, get all the relevant articles, come back with an answer that is relevant for the question asked. We also provide these three links. So these are the help articles from which the answers has been uh, given. So this is grounded in those links. And they can click on this link to go find the answer that they are looking for. So once again, this is a multi-turn, contextual, and grounded in the facts that were already present. Before I delve into an architecture diagram that you know, simplified one that you guys have already seen, I want to talk about two different things. It's not just about help articles and a conversational answer. You have to think about intent. You have to think about constraints, for example, visibility constraints on the articles. You have to think about how the response is being generated. A lot depends on the quality of responses. You have to make sure that the quality is up to the standards that, be, that is expected out of Uber. So you have to think about things like retrieval, consistency, accuracy of the results, so on and so forth, more than just an architecture diagram. Vector search helps us finding the right articles so that we can be sure of ourselves that the answers we are giving to the users are meaningful and helpful for what they need. It's a very simplified architecture diagram. We have a generative LLM that does our intent for us. Then we have vector search for our embeddings. And we have the prompts so that it goes on multi-turn. A response is generated. Then you move to the next question, so on and so forth. I know a lot of you are also thinking about building RG. I wanted to give you one little trick that helped us a lot, and hopefully you can find some benefit out of this. This is called rephrase. So when a user question comes in, we rephrase it using another prompt to figure out what's the right question to hit our semantic embeddings with. What it does help with is often the questions asked do not have an exact very good match on the help articles. If you do rephrase, you turn it into a question that is more likely to be answered, you'll get better answers. So simple tricks can help you get, or get better results out of your existing RG and infrastructure. So once again, I want to end with a great collaboration, especially Vector Search has with Google. Um, it can handle large volumes. Um, you can have streaming updates. You have very good late latency and high accuracy. And product tells us that's great early adoption on help.uber.com. We have great feedback. And CSAT, our customer satisfaction, is also going up. Once again, you know, great collaboration. And we hope to continue this within the future. Back to Josh.